Ineos have given it the talk about ending player power, stopping leaks, but some reports are suggesting that if Tenor goes, Sancho could be given a second chance, which could be pure hypocrisy, and that does worry me. We will get into that report. Ineos do plan to build United's future around one special player. There is a bit more of an update on Tenor's future. I'm going to give you the latest on Deserby because there's a lot of rumours flying about, and I'm just going to tell you sort of what we know so far on Deserby, and then we're going to talk about the academy. They've won the under 18s trophy, and at the end of the video, we're just going to talk about the academy and give them praise for being the only good thing about the season. But please do hit that like button if you're new, of course, subscribe down below if you're new, and let's get into today's video. So, starting with, of course, the Jaden Sancho story. Jaden Sancho is not giving up on his Manchester United career just yet, with Eric Tenog's future looking increasingly uncertain. Should Tenog go in the summer and a new manager come in, sources close to the player insist he would be open to starting again. No, 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 no. I don't care if Tenog is here. I don't care if Tenog goes. I don't care if Sancho goes and scores 20 goals in his next three games. He cannot come back. Pure facts. What example does that set? Sancho is on 350k a week, has been at United three full seasons. He's had three seasons to get his act together, has probably had five good games in three seasons, had to take a break in the second season, which Tenor gave him. Then in his third season, he'd rather not play football for four months than apologise to the manager for putting out a statement. Manchester United have had problems with egos in the dressing room, player power. Players thinking they're better than they are. I think Sancho is a better player than Anthony. But last season, Anthony probably had more good performances than Sancho. Anthony probably had three good performances. Sancho probably had two. And then Sancho the season before had three good performances under Ragnick. Sancho, for me, I thought was going to be one of the best signings in United history. Sancho was a player I was so lenient towards. Remember last season, I was so lenient towards Sancho because of things that he'd gone through off the pitch. And because of, obviously, you know, how much I rated him when we signed him. I knew there was a good player in Sancho. So I was so lenient with Sancho last season. Season. In fact, maybe I was too lenient. He was one of the players I was most biased and and, and probably less negative towards. But this season, he drew the he drew the line. Four months of no football to, and to force a move out on loan, refusing to apologise to the manager, putting statements out online. Sancho, I don't care if he all of a sudden becomes amazing in these last few weeks of Dortmund. He can't come back. As poor as Anthony is, Sancho hasn't been good enough for United. So first of all, we got to look at the standard. Been in three seasons, not been good enough any any of his three seasons. Gone to Dortmund, been six out of ten at Dortmund. Not been bad at Dortmund, not been good. Not done anything special at Dortmund, six out of ten. He has been consistently average. Manchester United have too many consistently average players. We can't be bringing up back another consistently average player because we thought it was going to be a world-class player when he's not delivered in three seasons. And the message that sends to the dressing room, oh, you can fall out with the manager, but if we sat the manager, you can come back in. No. Because that enables player power. Oh, you know, you, you know, you didn't work under Rolly, but we'll give you a chance under Ragnar. You didn't work under Ragnar, we'll give you a chance under Tenog. You're not working under Tenog, we'll give you a chance under the next manager. No, no, no. We need a proper clear out. And I think Ineos will probably get rid of Sancho, but I think it's the worry with his wages. Can they let him go? And if Tenog does end up leaving, Sancho might want to stay. If Tenog stays, Sancho will make sure he gets a move. But if Tenog leaves and Sancho knows the next manager might forgive him, why would he take a wage cut to leave United when he always wanted it to work at United? It was also said incoming Manchester United technical director <clears throat> Jason Wilcox is understood to be more open to giving Sancho another chance at the club, which I don't like the idea of. Player power, boom, poor, pre three seasons, high wages, get out. And it's believed that Sancho, um, it's believed that selling Sancho is the first choice. So even despite those reports, I think Ineos want to sell Sancho, but they know it's going to be difficult to sell Sancho because of his wages. I just don't want them to be giving him second chances because they can't sell him because of his high wages. I want them to say, look, if you stay, we're not going to play you. So you're just going to have a whole year off football and give Sancho the hard stance. And um, it was said by Luckus, of course, when we spoke about this in my live stream earlier, that some Manchester United players are delaying decisions over their future due to uncertainty over whether Tenog will be sat. And there's a feeling that Jaden Sancho if Tenog is sacked, we'll want to go back to Manchester United and is basically basing his future off Tenog sacked or not, which I think is ridiculous. How can you act like that? And then the manager get, goes before you. If, if Tenog goes before Sancho, it shows the problems with this club. Now, I understand if Ineos do sack Tenog because this season's not been good enough. But for me, if Tenog goes and Sancho stays, that just sums up the club and the mess that we've been for the last 10 years. It really does. I don't want Tenog to go. I want him to stay. I want him to be given time. But I'll tell you what, if Tenog goes before Sancho, Tells you everything. 
Now, talking of Tenor, talking of Tenor's future, let's get into these manager rumours. It was said Eric Tenor's Ajax Dream manager target this summer. They're also working on a plan B, C and D in case Tenor says no. We know that Ajax want Tenor. We know if Tenor does leave United, he does have quite good options. Academy Scoop said early suggestions point towards Brighton manager De Zerbi being Ineos' favourite choice to become Man United manager if they sack Ten Hag, which again aligns with the info I heard. What we do know about De Zerbi is he's highly appreciated by Omar Barada. When they were looking at potential pet replacements last season, Barada was one that was up on the list. Uh, we know that Ashworth's been aware of um, De Zerbi for a while. We obviously know Ashworth was at Brighton the same time as Potter, but Brighton had a list of names if Potter did leave that they would replace him with and Ashworth was involved in you know, Deserbi being on that list. We know that Deserbi has former coaches at Nice. One of his apprentices that worked under him is at Nice. We know that Ineos rates Deserbi and we know that Ineos want to employ similar structures to Brighton regarding head coach and recruitment and those kind of things, which obviously has worked really well at Brighton. But of course, nothing set in stone. No decision has been made on Tenog's future, And but Deserbi is one to watch. The problem is, Tenog, you have to pay him out if you sack him. Deserbi is going to cost money. We're already paying for Ashworth. We're already playing for Wilcox um, in, in a tight window. Um, that could matter. At the end of the day, I made, I made this clear. Ineos' decision to sat Tenag will depend on the managers available and the cost of it, as well as, you know, results towards the end of the season. But Ineos do like Tenag. They do like the work he's done at Ajax with the youth, and they do believe there's a good manager there. And if Zerbi isn't attainable, and Amorin isn't attainable, and Nagelsmann isn't attainable, they might stick with Tenag because they say, look, this guy is, this guy is a lot better than Gareth Southgate. Continuing on. It was said that Ineos want Kobe Maynard to be one of the faces of the new project at United and are pushing talks to extend this contract this summer after initial discussions in February. It's been told that Ineos are open to selling about 95% of the Manchester United squad this summer. Nobody's safe, but Kobe Maynard was one of those that Ineos want to build around. Kobe Maynard was seen as the main face that Ineos want to build around. They also admire Hoyland and Garnacho, but right now Kobe Maynard is the one player that Ineos are like, this is the guy we want to build around. This is the guy we want to be the face of the new Man United project, and I'm all for that. For me, Kobe Maynard has been incredible, um, and he just continues to be great, and I think we're not getting the best out of him because of the structure, because of the players. There could be an unbelievable player, and Kobe Maynard if we utilise him properly. Um, and I hope we do that next season. We get the midfield right, we get the structures right, and we use Kobe in his best role. Now, Kobe came from the academy, and the academy has gone from strength to strength for this season, winning the under-18s league for the first time, I believe, in six years. So Nick Cox has paid a tribute to that, and then we're going to talk about a couple of other academy stars that have been spotted in first-team training, which we may see come through towards the end of the season. I think there's a chance for another star to come through very soon. Nick Cox pays tribute to the under-18s after winning the Premier League North, North title. I'm extremely proud of what Adam Lawrence and the staff have been able to achieve, he said. He said the players have been stretched with exposure to numerous competitions and age groups, whilst also supporting the first-team squad. They've consistently risen to challenge each other that we have designed for them and accomplished something really special together. Individual player development is always our primary aim, but competing to win under pressure was vital. Both objectives have been achieved across the board with players enjoying the challenging yet supportive environment and ultimately harnessing the winning mentality. What I've been really impressed with in regards to the Manchester United under 18s is how technically good they are. Harry Amash, Shea Lacey, so technically good. Uh, their ability to cover ground. What Tenog did at Ajax, they're mirroring in the academy. Their ability to cover ground, their technical ability to execute it. The recruitment for the academy has been incredible. Obviously, Garnacho is one of the past. Uh, Harry Amas came in recently. B and Shiri's come in recently. The Fletcher twins have come in recently. But the winning mentality, the academy have winning mentality, have maturity. They're all technically good on the ball and workhorses out of possession that press are intelligent and the decision-making of those players is really good. Obviously, for their age, just for their age. Everything the United Thirst team is lacking, we're seeing in the academy. And with the first team being unstable and no position really set in stone at the club right now and a big rebuild happening, and this is the best lot of under-18s in my lifetime because I wasn't around when the class of uh, 92 were around, there's going to be gaps and spaces and uh, where, you know, certain players could break through from that under-18 side. And I think, you know, Garnacho and Maino and is just the beginning. Kambuala could be one. Harry Amas could be one. We could have another class of 92 and it could be something very, very exciting. But listen, people, please do hit that like button on your way out. And of course, subscribe down below if, to, if, to Alice Talks Football. If you're new, I do videos and live streams every single day, short videos to get all the info out 10 minutes for you guys and live streams where we can discuss that in more detail. But yeah, big up to everybody. I will be back tomorrow with a live stream. See you then. Bye.